Hey campers, Georgia, back in the man cave with Mary, who I think I just woke up from a nap. Back from California, I spent a week with the kiddos and seeing my brother and all my nephews and nieces and grandnephews and whatnot. So that was good, had a good Christmas and I hope everybody else did as well. And when I got back, there was a prize waiting for me. And I've been looking at this for quite a while. And what it is, is a knife from Rough Riders. And it's this guy here. It's the Faded Blue Jean series. And I really uh, like the look of this one and the way they do it. So I thought I'd get it and share it with you. So let's check it out. So here it is here in the box. And it's, you know, a typical Rough Rider. They come in really nice boxes. I really like the way they package this. And you can see there, um, has the model number. And the model number on this one is the RR2357, if you're wondering. And uh, from Rough Rider. And it's the Faded Blue Jeans series. And you can see that across there. And it says the Mikado Handle Series with orange underliners. And finally pulled the trigger on it and got it. And you can see I like the way they, they really do a nice packaging deal. Right there. And this one, this guy right here, you see that? It's a good looking knife, I can tell you. I really like the colors. This handle looks better than I, I thought it would. And uh, I like the way they have these little orange liners and things in there. It really brings out the knife and makes it look pretty. It is a whittler. It's uh, the the correct name for this is the Rough Rider Faded Blue Jeans Swayback Whittler. So it is a swayback. You can see it there. Um, if you look carefully there, uh, it does have that swayback on it. On the ends here, you have your two bolsters. And of course, they nickel silver. And then you've got your three pins holding the uh, scales on there. It does have the Rough Rider standard badge, nickel silver as well. Fits in there really nicely. So you can see there. And it has the the R on the the one bolster here. It doesn't have it on the top there, but they have little lines in them and everything. Say hello to Mary. She's finally woken up. With me being away for a week, uh, came back and she won't leave me alone. <laughs> uh, never thought she'd ever miss me. She always ignores me when I go away. So, uh, so back to the knife. So you can see it there, sway back. And it has this denim Mikado handle. And it's a really, really nice looking handle. Nice and smooth. Typical for Rough Rider. Feel it. They have, they really do a good job on this. The only issue I'm having right now is if you look there at that, uh, right there, you can see there's a gap there on that uh, liner that they have in there. But I'm willing to live with that. It, uh, it's not going to affect the, the use of the knife or anything like that. One of the main reasons I looked at it, one, it said it was a whittler. And I, I love to whittle. I'll grab any knife that says it's a whittler and find a piece of wood and start hacking away at it. This comes with three blades, which uh, kind of surprised me. I thought it was a two-blade uh, knife. It is a three-blade knife, and it has two-blade types and two of my favorites, obviously, uh, if you're looking here, you can see the bigger blade here. The nail nicks, they do have the little nicks in there, um, which is becoming pretty standard with uh, a lot of the knives. It does have a half stop. Comes out here, and there's the first blade. I love a Warren Cliff uh, blade. I think it makes a good whittling blade. It has that nice point on it, nice flat blade there. And, you know, you you can get in. It comes in nice and tight there, so it's nice and thin. Uh, it's sharp. I can feel it. <laughs> you know, not as sharp as I've seen after being spoilt by a young lady in Florida who uh, sent me those sharp bucks. Um, it's going to be hard to beat that. But from the factory, not bad. Mm. I, I can't complain about that. And you can see the Warren Cliff. It's very obvious. It has that down, downward uh, front to it. It does have a swedge on it, a false blade on the top. You can see there. And it is stainless 440A, uh, all the blades. The bolsters, I should have mentioned that before, and they are like all Rough Rider knives, nickel silver, the pins. And then uh, 
you have the Rough Rider badge. And I like that. I like that badge. Nice and simple. Two R's on it. And that's nickel silver as well. So the blade, 440A. Um, on the blade there, you can see it has the, the two R's on it there. And on the other side, uh, the normal information that nobody wants to see. The num model number and it says China. Yep, made in China. And you can see on the top there, it says 440. It actually doesn't say, hey, it just says 440 razor sharp steel. And I, they say that on all, all their blades. Uh, this is the A. Personally, I personally, the way I use my knives and that, don't really see a big difference between A, B, C, 440. I, it's not something that, that uh, I'm concerned about. I found that all the knives, no matter what it is, 440 is not bad. Any 440 blade, A, B, or C, works for me. So no, no problems there. The other blade is, uh, not, I did say, did I say it has a half stop on all the blades? <laughs> yeah, Mary is looking for attention again. Um, as you can see here, you'll have to excuse Mary, I'm sorry. I don't want to just push her off. This blade here, pen blade. And it has that half stop, just like the Warren Cliff does. And it comes down, and I love a good pen blade. This is kind of a small pen, uh, pen blade on it. And the name pen blade came from, as you know, I'm sure I've said it a hundred times. I'll say it again. One of my favorite blades. <laughs> Grew up with a pen blade. And it was used, originally designed for making, uh, cleaning up your quill when you used ink and a feather quill to write with so they, they could get them really sharp and they used to just use that to clean it up nice edge. Uh, looking here you can see this has a swedge on it as well. It's a very small swedge. You see it there? Nah, thought that unusual but it gives you that thinner blade at the tip here. Uh, 440A as well. The other blade basically the same thing again. Uh, I'm going to put that one down. I don't want to pull it down onto the other one. Exactly the same blade. They do have the RR on it there. Right there. You can see he has the nail clips on it. Now, I'm going to put it all back together here. You can see it there. Very nice. And then your liners. And like I said, unfortunately, my one has a little bit of an ops here. I, uh, you know, like I said, I... <laughs> Things like that don't bother me. If I was looking to put this into a collection, I would ask them to replace it. But it's not. Uh, you know, the knives I get, I have a ton of them. They sit back there and, you know, I randomly pull them out. I'm going to walk outside and find a piece of wood and sit down there with a cup of coffee and just whittle away. And I'll grab any knife. I do like a whittling knife, though, to do it. I get better results out of it. They're simply designed that way. With the Warren Cliff and the pen blades, you can't go wrong. So you can see the orange uh, highlights here on the edge of the, the scales there. And then the orange liners there. You know, on this side, you can see the liners sitting pretty good. Uh, how do the blades line up? They line in there. They, they sit in there. You can see there. You can see the big uh, Warren Cliff coming down there. And it sits right dead center. So nice and like i said it has that half stop which i i do like you know it's a slip joint knife which is pretty typical for a lot of pen knives but it has a good solid slip point in it you can you see that look at that that spring is healthy so it, it's nice to have that it'll pop in and even into the half stop there you can see the the half stop uh, nice clip in there so I wonder if it's as good on there. Yeah, oh yeah, you know, and it 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 goes in there um, pretty good. It snaps in there and it sits nicely. So can't complain with that. Most people who use them are aware of that. I, you know, you got to be careful. It is a slip joint. You you got to be careful how you use the blade. You can't push down it on the other side or use it to pry or something like that because it will slip. Nice knife. I like the bolsters. Typical bolsters each side, nickel silver has the R on that one there. You can see it there, and they have the, these two lines on it, which is typical for Rough Rider. Love this knife. I really like the look of this knife. Uh, I put it off for a long time. 
no particular reason. It wasn't overpriced or anything like that. I just had, I was looking for other stuff. I was really going through my real favorite everyday carry knife, which is, uh, I was looking at sword busters. And uh, if you've been watching my videos, I've been going through sword busters and uh, looking at all different kinds. And I, I think I just got another one. Now, I wanted to compare this from another one of my favorite makers, marbles. And I love marbles. They, you know, uh, it, I don't know what it is, but I, I just like their stuff. And it's a marbles. You know, it's, <laughs> what can I say? It's a marbles. And they're always well priced. It's a little sod buster. And, you know, that's why I put this guy off for so long. I was, I was on a sod buster hunt for the, and I got the, and the reason I got that marbles is I want to compare it to another sod buster that I got. And it's basically the same thing. I want to see if the quality is the same. Because there's quite a price difference between them. Speaking of price on this guy, how much did I pay for this? Well, that much. Not bad. You know, any any folding knife for me that's under 20 bucks is a good deal. As long as the quality is reasonable and it's not falling apart in my hand, I'm happy with it. And, you know, I'm happy with this guy. Well, I want to test the blade quickly and see if I got it piece of wood. I know I have a piece of wood. I had a disaster happen. I was doing some whittling and I was going to make a, uh, a ladle and I did exactly what I didn't want to do. I, if I remember on the video, I said I don't want to make the, the handle too thin. Well, I did. And it snapped off when I started doing the bowl. I snapped it off. So now I have a piece of wood I can cut. Let's see. Uh, you can see there. It, uh, it's getting in there, no problem. And this is really hard wood. You know, for whittling, it's not ideal. And uh, obviously something like basswood is, is much better. And this is, this is cutting into it, no problem, no problem there. You can see it's just getting into there nicely. And it'll whittle fine. You know, it probably needs a little bit of a cleanup. Um, I'm trying to be uh, proactive with uh, knives I get from the factory that I'm going to go out and use right away, and that is strop them. I haven't done it with this one. I'll strop it and see if it makes a difference. If it doesn't, I'll have to give it a couple of swipes on my workshop and then strop it again. The Warren Cliff blades, you know, it's sharp enough to whittle right out the box, so that's a good thing. Uh, let's see how the pen blades do. Let's see. Oh. Look at that, digging right into it, no problem. So, can't complain about that. You can see it's cutting into there nicely, no issues. I am planning on going on a little walkabout. It is, you know, we, we had the storm, obviously everybody knows about the storm. Uh, fortunately, I wasn't here when it happened. I was in California in 70 degree weather while all my friends and People out there that I know were struggling with negative 20 degrees out there with the wind chills and things like that. So I like I just happened to plan right. But we have a lot of snow on the ground and I want to go and do a walkabout. One of the reasons I want to go, I'm going to go down to a local uh, private uh, reserve just down the road here. Been there a lot of times before. Been on walkabouts there and taking you with me. And I know they have basswood there. And I'm going to go and have a look and see if I can find any... Uh, branches or sticks that have fallen. Obviously, I don't want to cut a, a living tree. So I know where this on basswood. Actually, Lee, on our last walk about there, pointed out one to me, and I, it's in a reasonable access area. But I have to use this in the meantime. And as you can see, it's cutting it just fine. And this is by no means a soft wood. So it's getting in there. So it'll, it, this will work. And I like the idea of two pen blades. Why? You use one, it gets a little dull, you just switch over to the other one and you don't have to worry about stopping what you're doing. The Warren Cliff, you would have to stop and clean. Uh, but I do like that blade. Nice blade. And uh, it's a nice Warren Cliff. I, I, you know, uh, 440A. And there's the knife sitting right there. You can see it there. Very nice, liking this knife. Good looking knife as well. 
Rough Rider, like I said, it's the uh, Rough Rider faded blue jean swayback whittler. Very nice. The clothes length, which would be basically the length of the handle with the bolsters, 3.75 inches. Typical, uh, not big. The weight, I like the weight of these. It's got a good weight to it. It's not over heavy. It's just right for me. And I can live with that in my pocket uh, for a couple of hours. <laughs> like I said, I struggle with car keys in my pocket. So this will work. When I, they, they, they do say inner liners, and that's, if you look there, it's actually like a double liner. They, they put that uh, orange liner in on top of the, the regular liners. So uh, very nice. It really adds, adds to the knife. Length of the blades. Let's have a look, see quickly. The Warren Cliff, I'm going to say about two and a half inches. It, I think it depends on the manufacturer. I'm looking in and I put it on my uh, ruler here on my pad and I'm looking from the tip of the Warren Cliff to where the choil is, is exactly two inches. And interestingly enough, they say on their spec sheet that the Warren Cliff is two inches. A lot of other manufacturers go from the tip all the way to the bolster. You know, you never know. <laughs> to me, the, I think the correct way is the way they've done it. I want to know the length of the working blade, the edge of the working blade. So I like that. So which is really from the tip to the choil. Nice flat blade, obviously. Warren Cliff, it, it makes for a great whittler. The length of the pen blades, uh, 1.75, I think. Yep. There you go, one you know, one point seven five inches. So, not a big blade, but you don't want you got your big blade here. So that works for me. Size of this, the actual the width of the blade, point eight, point sorry, point zero eight inches, is the thickness of the blade. And uh, that's on both of them actually on the widest point. And like I said, they do have that false blade on all of the blades, both pen blades. Yeah, which is kind of unusual because it's only like really small. And then your Warren Cliff has your, uh, the switch, the false edge. So very nice. I like this knife. For the price, it's a rough rider. You know, they don't, it's, not, it's never going to break the bank. So you can see the badge there. But you don't forget, like, share, subscribe. <laughs> you know the story. Let me get all that out of the way. Phone's a little rusty. Things are sticking. I haven't used it make a video for a while. Like I said, New Year's coming up. You all be safe over New Year. And of course, always safe, safe, safe with them sharp and shinies. A lot of things coming up for the New Year. Have a fishing trip, ice fishing trip coming up next week, actually going up north. And hopefully I'll have some fish to show you. Always a good time. It's the annual ice fishing trip. Last year I missed it. Um, I was sick. So I couldn't go. And hopefully you will be successful next year. Now you will be safe and take care. And I'm pretty sure I'll be back. Just saying. Thanks for watching. <laughs>